right. So traditionally, when somebody's given a speech before, they kind of talked about what they did at the museum or what they're interested in. But I quickly realized that most of the stuff that I handled at the museum was not exactly lunch appropriate. So <laughs> I decided to pick a more delicious topic and talk about the healing powers of honey. Okay, so at Wakaido University in um, New Zealand, there's a gentleman by the name of Peter Mullen, and he heads up the Honey Research Center there. So he's one of the foremost leaders in honey research as um, a healing property and as a medicinal property. Um, and I just really like this quote, it's not his research, it kind of sums up my presentation. Um, honey has been used as a medicine for thousands of years and its curative properties are well documented. However, modern medicine turned its back on honey and it is now, it is only now with the advent of multi-resistant bacteria that the antibiotic properties of honey are being rediscovered. And this appealed to me because it obviously had a historic effect and it had an effect on the current medical field. So, um, it's well known through cave paintings that prehistoric man used honey as a food substance. Um, but it was with the Egyptians that they first noted um, use of honey as a medicinal property. Um, the picture up here is, the, is from the Edmund Smith Papyrus, which is one of the oldest surviving examples of medical literature. And it's written in a language of ancient Egypt from around 16th, the 16th century BC. It's based on material, though, that was about a thousand years older. And in it, it lists 48 traumatic injury cases, and it lists a description of each examination, um, treatment, and prognosis of each case. Um, in it, honey is, honey is listed as the most frequent ingredient in all of the drug recipes for both internal and external medicine. This papyrus, as well as others found, list honey as a treatment for everything from stomach pains, urinary retention, dry skin, wounds, burns, skin irritation, and diseases of both the eyes and the ears. So it was pretty much used for everything. Around the same time, the uh, Hindu Vedas were written, um, and it speaks of honey as an all-encompassing remedy as well. Um, in its section, Hymn to All Magic and Medicinal Plants, it lists honey as the universal remedy in much the same way as it was in Egypt. Um, basically, their knowledge of the of things was that the plants removed the disease, and since honey is made from the pollen of the plants, it must also produce some medical properties. Um, also, we know that in ancient Greece, some of the most well-respected scholars spoke of the wonders of honey. Um, Aristotle himself believed that honey would prolong life. Um, also, Hippocrates is quoted as saying, I eat honey and use it in the treatment of many diseases because honey offers good food and good health. Um, I'm sorry, I'm probably going to botch his name, but Dios Dioscorides noted in his work De Materia Medica in 77 AD that honey could be used to treat diseases of the stomach, infected wounds, hemorrhoids, and fits of coughing. He also noted honey as a treatment to reduce pain and swelling of the ears and tonsils, and also thought it to kill lice. Um, he believed that it acted to open the blood vessels and attract moisture towards the injury. During the height of the Islamic expansion, honey was also no, well known as a curative. Um, this information was based on the teachings of Prophet Muhammad in the Holy Quran. Um, the Prophet advised his followers to use two curatives, which were honey and the holy book. Um, it is also understood that once a man came to him suffering from diarrhea and he instructed him to take honey as a cure and it worked. Um, the renowned Muslim physician Al-Razi um, from about 980 wrote it in his book Al-Hawi, which is an um, encyclopedia of medicine. Honey is the best <coughs> treatment for the gums. To keep the teeth healthy, mix honey and vinegar and use it as a mouthwash daily. And if you rub the teeth with such a preparation, it will whiten the teeth. And since honey does not spoil, it could also be used to preserve cadavers. Um, his book was translated from Arabic to Latin in the 13th century, and it was a standard medical textbook up until the 1700s. Um, another Arab physician, Ibn Sina, um, whose medical treatise was also used up until the 17th century, wrote that honey is a very good prolonger of life and it could be used in combination with flour as a wound dressing, in combination with rose petals for lung diseases and the beginnings of tuberculosis, or alone for cures of bouts of insomnia. Um, so basically, honey was known throughout the world as a cure. 
um, Gilbertus Anglicus, who is a middle-aged aged priest from England and a medical writer, wrote that the medicinal properties and guides of sorry, wrote many medicinal and prop medicinal recipes and guides with honey being a frequent ingredient in treating everything from head to tail. Um, during this time, the Germans have also been known to use honey to treat ailments such as burns, fistulas, boils, sores, and ulcerations. It was not until the early 20th century, though, that reports began to come out on the antimicrobial properties of honey, and the Russians during the First World War used it to prevent wound infection and also to facilitate proper wound healing. Um, this knowledge is of particular use to the developing world, where honey is the cornerstone of their pharmacopoeia. Um, for example, in India, lotus honey is used for disease of the eye, especially for measles to prevent corneal scarring. Um, it is also used to treat leg ulcerations in Ghana, erics in Nigeria, and so pretty much throughout the world. Um, there's a, this is an area where honey is still most used today and where it could perhaps do the most good in our contemporary world. I like the little way you look through. Today, honey has generally been re relegated to the realm of folk medicine and, and not, not thought to hold any real uses in today's world of medicine. Mr. Peter Mullen that I spoke of before um, and the people at the forefront of this research, research believe the very opposite that in a time of antibiotic-resistant superbugs, we need honey more now than ever. Using some of the contemporary reports that I'll be later speaking about, you can begin to see how just how the field of medicine could benefit from the honey research. <coughs> All right, so some of the sciencey part. Um, basically, the biggest antibiotic property of honey is hydrogen peroxide. Um, when the bees process the nectar, they secrete the enzyme glucose oxidase, and in, when this becomes in the presence of water and oxygen, it converts the glucose to glucuronic acid and hydrogen peroxide. Um, both of these act to preserve and sterilize the honey, so it's the major component. But in addition to this, honey also possesses an osmotic effect um, because the supersaturated sugar solution acts as a hygroscopic medium, so it draws moisture out, and since microorganisms require water to support their growth, they dry up and it protects the wood. Um, also, honey's pH is somewhere between 3.2 and 4.5, depending on the source of the honey, so it's far too acidic for many pathogens to grow. Um, finally, it is believed that some honeys possess other antibiotic and sorry, antibacterial chemical substances, but much of their levels are too low and unstudied to prove any which way. Um, it should be noted though that pasteurization is thought to diminish the antibiotic properties because it changes the way everything interacts. So most of the stuff that you get at the grocery store is pasteurized. So if you want, you're probably gonna have to go to a farmer's market to find unpasteurized. All right, bacteria fighting power. <laughs> I got really excited about the graphics. <laughs> um, as previously suggested, due to its natural antibiotic properties, honey could greatly aid in the fight against the overuse of commercial antibiotics and the superbugs, which are multi-resistant strains of bacteria. <coughs> honey has been said to have an inhibitory, an inhibitory effect on over 60 species of bacteria, and it has been noted as having antifungal effects on some yeast and species of Aspergillus and Penicillium. The level of antibiotic fighting properties honey um, vary based on what the honey is made from, which flowers and what sources. Uh, this means that different honeys can treat different, or are thought to treat different ailments, which is shown by the diversity of common uses that I spoke of earlier. Um, several areas of the world are becoming well known for their honey, such as the lotus honey out of India and manuka honey out of New Zealand. Um, these are both areas of the world where active scientific studies on the medicinal use of honey are taking place, and these honeys are regarded as having the strongest antibacterial properties. Just like commercial antibiotics, though, certain strains of bacteria are more and less sensitive to the antibacterial properties of honey. Um, and just as an example, Staphylococcus aureus is one of the most susceptible to the honey. Um, so some of the other significant properties is that Honey has a rapid deodorization effect on offensive smelling wounds, so it's been used at. Um, it also has a debriding effect, which generally renders surgical embriding unnecessary or very minimal um, at best. Uh, the dead tissue separates very easily from the wound after honey has been applied, 
and it has been shown to be particularly effective on Fournier's gangrene, which is a type of necrotizing fasciitis. Um, it has been reported that honey can act to also reduce inflammation, edema, and exudation around wounds, which accounts for the soothing effect as reported by the patients. Um, patients also report that there's no pain on dressing a wound or burn, um, and generally report that the only discomfort is a mild and momentary stinging sensation. It's also been noted that honey is non-irritating and does not cause allergic reactions as some of the commercially manufactured antibiotics do. Um, due to its supersaturated sugar content, honey is ideal to also be mixed as a rehydration fluid. Okay, so wound dressings. Um, when honey has been applied to a wound, it creates a protective covering for the new skin to form. This means that the scab doesn't form and the skin doesn't have to grow underneath the dry scab so it can grow straight across. Um, Dressings are able to be impregnated with honey, providing that there's a waterproof outer layer so it doesn't seep back out. Uh, this enables moisture to stay close to a wound, but keeps a sterile atmosphere to prevent excessive drying. Honey provides the right condition for skin granulation as an injury is healing. With honey bandages, this means the honey protects the new and very delicate skin granulation from adhering to a dressing so it doesn't get pulled off every time you change one. Um, most patients note very little or no discomfort at all when dressing changes as there's no bleeding and any excess honey can be re removed by simple bathing unlike many other dressing materials which must be wiped or forcefully washed off. Um, it has also been noted that in some of these dressing changes dirt has been removed with the bandages so it helps to clean out the wounds. Um, for burns, test results have shown that Patients who have honey applied to their burns first, and this could be first, second, or third degree burns, have burns that heal more quickly and have a less lesser risk of infection and actually heal better than some of the commercially manufactured products that were used to sterilize the wound. Dressing a wound or burn with honey made the wound bed suitable for skin grafting and gives prompt taking of the skin grafts if they are done. Many patients, though, healed on their own to a point where skin grafting wasn't even necessary in some of the um, studies that were conducted. In clinical testing, honey proved to heal partial thickness wounds, so first and second degree burns, faster than the widely used burn treatment methods, some of which from all over the globe were um, the polyurethane film dressing, amniotic membrane, sulfur sulfadiazine, and boiled potato peelings. The test showed that 87% were healed within 15 days with the honey versus only 10% with the silver sulfadiazine. Um, this test was supported by microscopic analysis of animal wounds that were treated with honey. And when the test proved sometimes that honey had roughly about the same healing time, they used a microscope to analyze the, like the process of the healing, and they showed that it was a better quality of healing than what it was with some of the other things. Okay, so it's also been used for <coughs> difficult to heal wounds. Um, honey is been long used for all sorts of ulcerations, um, and this is true today. They're especially researching it for um, use of leg, leg ulcerations for people with diabetes. Um, the honey has been proven to stimulate the healing and prevent infection for some of this, so some people will have gotten to keep some of their limbs. Um, this approach has been taken after surgeries. Oh, this. This approach has also been taken after surgeries on areas of the body that are prone to very slow healing times due to their location, bacteria, and moisture. Um, in one case, a patient with multiple ulcers on both legs had one leg dressed with honey and the other uh, leg dressed conventionally, um, and the ulcers on the leg that were treated with honey healed much more rapidly than the other one. Um, it's also been used to treat dyspepsia, gastritis, duodenitis, and peptic ulcers, particularly in Russian and Arabic countries. Um, a clinical trial had reported in which 45 patients with dyspepsia were given no more medication than 30 milliliters of honey before their meals three times a day. After the treatment, a number of patients passing blood from the peptic ulcers um, had decreased from 37 to 4. The number of patients with dyspepsia had decreased from 41 to 8. The number of patients with gastritis or duodenitis um, decreased from 24 to 15 and the number of patients with a duodenal ulcer um, had decreased from seven until two. Uh, in addition to this, honey is believed to stimulate the body's immune system by stimulating the B and T lymphocytes in cell cultures multiply. Mm -hmm. Just one more report. 
another, another report gave the results of treating honey dressings, 47 patients with wounds and ulcers, which had been treated for one month to two years with conventional therapy. They had showed no signs of healing or even had an increase in size. Um, but then honey was applied and microbiological swabs from the wounds showed that the wounds with bacteria present became sterile within one week and the other wounds remained sterile. Conclusions. Um, again, me the poo. Our knowledge of the healing powers of honey for many nations have been passed down through history by a great number of different cultures. In an age of modern medicine, in an age of modern medicine where folk medicine is generally disregarded, honey is re-emerging as a master healer. It is a natural, its natural antibiotic properties are helping to fight many strains of bacteria that have become resistant to antibiotics, which are also the strains that can be most dangerous to a patient in the healing process. The reason that it has been passed down through history is because it has been proven to work. Um, and there is considerable effort to prove this through scientific, scientifically sound experimentation that honey does all the things that it's said to do, but that said, there needs to be more so that we can expand on it. Um, honey holds great promise for treatments, even within the world's foremost treatment facilities, but it possibly holds an even greater <coughs> promise for the developing world, where there's not the access to medicines that we enjoy here. Almost all countries of the world have cultivated bees for centuries, and they have access to the honey, so now it's really just a point of researching where the honey has mo more antibiotic properties, and why it's different between the different types of honey. So maybe Winnie the Pooh was right and we could all use a little more honey because it's the bee's knees. <laughs> <laughs>